So we are here today uh, to launch the Art Vault, uh, just to recap for a few of you who've just joined, um, to launch the debut show, uh, the New Futures Digital, showcasing one leading uni UK university at a time. Um, we have Mazzy May Green and Greta Voller uh, curating for CSM, that's Central St. Martins, um, which is launching today. Uh, followed by um, Slade School of Fine Art, uh, which is curated by artist and curator Victoria Canton. Um, and then followed by um, RCS with the Royal College of Art um, with Yang Xu and Jin Yao Chen. So that's a brief introduction, uh, but I want to start with a detailed introduction to uh, Amaros Abrams, who is an esteemed journalist. We are very happy to have you, Amaros. Um, and uh, so Amaros is, um, is a journalist uh, working with the New York Times, the art newspaper, wallpaper, Artnet, and um, you name it. So we are so happy to have you uh, moderating this incredible panel. Um, and then we'd, I'd love also to introduce the curators that you're able to see here. I'll start with uh, Mazzy May Green, who uh, has studied um, an MA uh, in curation, culture and criticism from CSM, Central St. Martins, and is an editor and curator, London-based. Uh, in fact, not too far from where I live. Um, Greta Voller uh, has also uh, completed her MA in Culture, Criticism and Curation from CSM um, and uh, is currently based internationally in Germany and Italy um, and is also a curator and um, an editor. Uh, so thank you so much for joining us, Mazzy and Greta. Um, and then I'd love to introduce Victoria Cantons, who is the curator for SLED. Uh, Victoria is uh, an excellent artist as well. And you see uh, her artwork right behind her. Um, and uh, thank you, Victoria, for joining us. Victoria has um, completed her uh, BA in Wimbledon College and is completing her MFA at Slade next year and has curated shows um, internationally, including London Grads Not Saatchi, uh, and we're very happy to have you, Victoria. And I'll go ahead and introduce Yang Xu, um, who is, again, another fantastic artist. You see her artwork right behind. Um, and the um, idea was to invite artists as well as curators um, for the show. Uh, so thank you so much for joining Yang Xu. Uh, Yang has um, graduated uh, with you know, honors uh, at Wimbledon College and also with her uh, MA in R RCA um, and won the prestigious uh, Barbican um, Trust Award, which is fantastic. Um, and also has showcased her work internationally. And we're so happy to have you, Yang to curate the RCA show. And a big thank you and shout out to Jun Yao for joining us right from China, uh, which is ridiculous o'clock there. Uh, but thank you so much for joining us and um, also curating the show, uh, the RCA show. Jun Yao has um, completed um, his uh, curation studies from RCA and uh, he focuses on uh, digital media and uh, human landscape, which is incredible. So we are so happy to have you all on board. Um, and uh, we have uh, our very own chief art officer, uh, Camilla Grimaldi uh, from Covered Art. And she's my partner in crime. Um, and we are so happy to have you, Cami. Uh, so now that we are done with our introductions, I uh, thought, why not go ahead and introduce the art world? So what is the art world? The art world is one digital uh, ex uh, exhibition space on Covered Art where we invite emerging uh, curators 
and established curators starting next year um, to curate incredible, exciting shows always aligned to the zeitgeist. And the idea is that we want to showcase the voice of the emerging curator and the voice of the uh, emerging artist. Um, the idea is that we want to showcase uh, uh, different curatorial perspectives every month or so, starting with this um, show, New Features Digital. So why don't I go ahead and quickly share my screen and I can um, show you um, if, if I can manage to open my screen and show you um, what the website looks like because we just launched and we'd of course love for you to go take a look. Uh, here we are. This is the home page as you know um, and when you click on the art vault um, here you go, this is the art vault, and um, there we go, ta-da, this uh, has been launched today um, with New Features Digital focusing on CSM, uh, it's an official collaboration with UAL Central St. Martins, which we are so pleased to announce, and um, the idea is that uh, we have an exhibition for discovery, for acquisition, of course, and for an international um, audience to partake in um, discovering, but also um, again, you know, collecting and understanding the artwork. So I'm obviously quickly browsing here. You can go ahead and browse more. But the idea is that uh, we wish to um, showcase um, all the artwork which is available for sale. So why don't I go ahead and share quickly here. We also want to showcase um, some of these. So this is what you get when you click on each work um, and you know the bio, et cetera. So I would love to quickly uh, run through some of the works that have been submitted, not only from CSM, because of course we start with CSM, then in January on 20th, Slade School of Fine Art is going to be spotlighted, followed by RC and March 3rd. So CSM, we have a few incredible works. I'm going to just run past through it so that you have an idea of the caliber of work. And uh, these are all being created during the pandemic. International artists, right from, again, you know, Turkey to Poland and, um, Again, moving on to Slade, curated by Victoria. We have an incredible selection right from photography um, to painting, watercolor, prints. Um, this is for all the schools. So that's the idea of the art world. Uh, we are also collaborating with interior designers, art advisors internationally, and we hope that uh, we create an ecosystem, um, a community of the art curious, art collectors, um, and uh, especially it's been a tough year. So we think it's incredibly important to showcase some exceedingly compelling work um, that uh, has to be seen internationally. So the idea is absolutely that. So curators, collectors, uh, art advisors um, are always uh, invited to our talks. And the idea is that uh, we want to have some digitally engaging sessions. So that's about it. While I spoke, I wanted to showcase um, some of the works uh, and then I'll stop here. Uh, you will have seen Victoria and Yang's works as well because they're both artists. Um, and with that, um, Kami, if you can say a few words, and I'd love for Amaros to continue interviewing and asking a few questions to the panelists. So, Kami, please go ahead. Well, thank you, Cyrus. Can you hear me well? Yes. Great. Sorry, because I had some problems with the internet, but um, thank you. Actually, Sarah, you almost said uh, you said an excellent summarize of what is the art vault. Just to to emphasize that the art vault it it helps. Um, curators, um, interior designers, um, art lovers, collectors to have an easy access and to source and to discover um, exquisite and talented artworks. So it's very easy. You just go on our website, you go at www.covet.art and you just 
click on the art vault and you will find this extraordinary, extraordinary archive of these talented artists. As Sarah was saying, it is curated by um, emerging talented um, curators that we have here, this panelist, and we will continue even with um, even next year. Um, so please, I uh, you said everything, I will leave the word to, um, to the moderator and to Amazing. please Thanks, Cami. And Emma, uh, Rose, it's all yours. Uh, the stage is all yours, the virtual stage. Um, so please go ahead and towards the end, uh, people can ask questions. So please feel free to uh, ask questions in the Q&A button or the chat button. And towards the end, we'll take up the questions. So Emma, Rose, the floor is yours. Thank you so much. Hello. Um, thank you for having me today. I'm really looking forward to hearing what all these um, graduating curators have got to say about their shows and um, yeah, what a important time for curating online shows. What great experience to have going into what might be another year of a lot of online curated shows. Um, but I think um, I was gonna start with Greta. Um, if I can see Greta. Hi, yeah. Emma. Hey, how are Hi. you? I'm good. How are you? <laughs> yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Nice it's to great. meet you. <laughs> yeah, likewise. How are um? How's it been over the last year or so for you? Yeah, it's been uh, interesting and quite challenging to say the least. I would say, but um, I think you know, through every struggle, you can kind of see the light somewhere. So um, yeah. there's always you know ways of you know adapting and readapting to different challenges, and there's always positives in that as well. So it's been it's been good, absolutely good. All right, wonderful. <laughs> I wondered, like, when you were putting the show together, um, what was the vision that you had for it, and um and why and how did that play into um i guess putting together a digital show i mean how did that work yeah i mean it's obviously a fair question seen as you know we're working within visual realms throughout the year basically a lot of our shows that were planned to be physical ended up being virtual in the end particularly you know throughout CSM. Um, but I guess well, the way we started was really looking at um, the selection of works within CSM and the way the artists approach this sort of physical isolation that we all, that we all feel and that we've all been confronted with. Um, so notions of you know, isolation, solitude, all of those thematics started coming through. And there was a lot of sort of crossover between these preoccupations, but also the modes of working that the artists supplied, particularly because, you know, the studios were closed. So they were forced to work within the confinements of their homes, well, which is obviously quite unusual for everyone. Sure, for sure. Can you give us any examples of, um, of how, of, of like how, where, where artists had to kind of change what they were doing? Well, yeah, I mean, in, in a lot of our works, you know, you see um, Alexander Dixon or even, you know, Charles Bin, who kind of utilized their surroundings more than the immediate home, but they utilized their surroundings to be inspired and to create these narratives, you know, on, you know, isolation, but also singular perspective and then going outwards into ecological problems, environmental issues, all of that, but trying to really, you know, negotiate between the spaces that they're able to sort of, you know, roam within, yes. which was, which was a really interesting aspect. Yeah. Great to see as well as a curator, see all of that come out. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, um, and um, how, and do you think, could you, do you think that, I mean, obviously it would have been a completely different show had you um, been doing it physically, but to do a um, digital show at the moment is quite, um, there's something quite timely about it because we are seeing so many digital shows, so many fairs going online through necessity and so many galleries using um, viewing rooms and websites to sell their work and upscaling that whole thing. So I wondered, um, uh, did that help at all to see how all these other platforms and organizations were adapting throughout the year? Well, I guess from the basis, um, you know, these sort of uh, digital shows, you know, they kind of give you flexibility and accessibility which you would otherwise not have mm -hmm. so not just for us as curators in the way that we curate you know we have 
more um, freedom in the selection that we take on because you know it is you know it it is less sort of steered by institutional hierarchies, which is obviously a completely different thematic in itself. And uh, maybe we'll have the chance to speak about that. But in terms of audiences, you know, it really reaches a wide spectrum of audiences and. Um, it also kind of helps us, puts us in the position of the mediator, because we really need to establish these narratives, which you can't obtain because you're not actually in front of the work. So it's really up to us to be able to communicate those in a really, you know, um, stimulating and yeah, in a really stimulating way. Wonderful, wonderful. Um, and uh, moving on to Mazzy. Hi, Mazzy, how are you doing? Hi, I'm Rose. I'm good, thank you. How are you doing? I'm well, thank you. It's great to speak to you today. And I wondered, if, what was your process like putting this show together? Mm, um, yeah, it's it's been a really interesting process. I think very insightful uh, for me and Greta to kind of get to know the work of our contemporaries. Um, in terms of our, you know, curatorial process, um, we really sought to kind of convey the, the interdisciplinarity um, of Central St. Martins as a university, which is something that's quite distinct about it. Um, and so, you know, we pulled from different courses um, and we pulled from, you know, MA photography, we pulled from BA and MA fine art, and we also pulled from art and science. And so we looked at this kind of, you know, huge pool of about 150 um, online showcases. Um, and so a lot. now we kind of, yeah, it was a really, you know, it's a lot of, a lot of people um, kind of emerging this year. And from them, we kind of drew this long list of about 40 and began to you know pull pull um, works from that based on our concept, which had kind of already begun to intertwine within within the works. Mm -hmm. I think what we really wanted to kind of convey um, in the exhibition and in the process was this kind of snapshot um, of the artists and, and this kind of incredible work that that's coming out of this year. And I think you see that you see that in the show. We've got twenty eight um, artists, and each one really brings something quite different to the table. Not only in terms of like different, you know, life experience and different um, situational experience, but a very kind of diverse set of mediums and ways of working. Um, I think you know this kind of online format is is important for that as well, and it allows us to kind of represent this responsive output to a kind of global global audience. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's, it's like it's it, it you could in theory reach anyone with a device. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think it's, you know, it's really a, an international show of, of graduate works. And I think there's something quite nice in the resistance of that. I think that, you know, it's something that is resilient to the pandemic. We're able to, you know, convey these works and it's uninterrupted uh, by lockdown. And I do think that's quite kind of tribute to the resilience of the, the kind of wider art ecology itself. And also this kind of, you know, um, there is this kind of theme of resistance in the works too. So I think that that kind of pulls it together in quite a nice way. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, well, and um, I think I should move on to Victoria now. Um, but um, hi, Victoria. Hello. Hey. Hi, I'm a Rose. <laughs> it's good to meet you. Yeah, likewise. Um, and I was uh, wanted to ask you, um, in terms of when you were putting the show together for the Slade, um, what were the narratives that you found um, within the works that the um, artists were creating? Did you find any particular threads, thematic threads that were running through what people were making? I think one thing that's very interesting during the process of looking at all the different um, artists' works is, um, is common themes because on this occasion, it's really a show where even though the artists are a very disparate group, from, from different backgrounds, from different areas of the world. Um, you know, this is a unique time in which globally we're all having near enough the same experience. Yes. Uh, and I think that manifests itself quite strongly in the work that's being produced by artists at this time. You know, there, there's, there's a lot of, um, autobiographical confessional narratives going on and and um, I with with the artists and myself included as well because I'm one of the artists too uh, uh, you know something I felt for myself and something I saw reflected in the artist's work was 
an issue that that you know things are going there's a lot of introspection um you know it, it, it's that, that, that it's it's challenging to engage with the world as it is right now it's so a, what you do is you, you you know you go inside and, uh, and and you see what's there instead can you give me any examples it's quite intriguing um well, I, I think um, amongst amongst others are um, uh, Ellen and Uris, um, who is from who is from painting at Slade, and in the case of her work, um, there's a there's a there, it, she's I mean she's multidisciplinary, um, but uh, but there's a real intimacy in the work. Uh, with her and even though um you know the stuff that was being researched and explored by her mm. her practice was already doing that i think time and time again uh with 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 the with the artists from slade uh, and i would venture that that was also that 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 may have also happened to um, CSM artists and to RCA artists. Um, you know, what we're experiencing uh, as individuals and as a collective, um, these things are, um, are magnified. Absolutely. I kind of feel when you're spending so much time alone, even if you're locked down with family or you're, or you're working, when you're spending so much time alone, I think everything is magnified. It's like the volumes turned up on the minutiae of your day, let alone all these larger issues which you may want to put into your work. I think, yeah, it's fascinating. You know, the, 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 uh, but, um, but that said, you know, it's, it's not just about shoegazing. No. Uh, for example, um, uh, Francisca Sosa Lopez um, uh, is you know the personal is political with mm -hmm. with her work. Um, she is from Venezuela, and and her work really explores um, what's going on in her on the venezuelan home front uh, and and responds to that um it's it, just just like other situations um uh, and other other subjects that have become very very important in the course of this year have kind of reached a quite a crisis point yes. boiling point so to speak for example black lives matter um for 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 lopez you know what's going on in venezuela is is a vital thing and and she's using art um to to respond to that to comment on that to draw attention to it yeah and i guess and i think this at this time people have been able to focus on these really important <laughs> issues as everything has been stripped back in our lives with the general level of isolation that everyone is experiencing. I think that's really important. Sounds fantastic. And a good point as well, that not all introspecting is a shoegaze. Um, <laughs> but um, I'm, I'm moving on. It would be Jun Yao, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Hi, Hi. how Hi, are I'm you? Yeah, I'm good, <laughs> how are you? Great, great to meet you. Um, and I wanted to ask you specifically about the digital side of the show, like um, working internationally, as you join us um, from China, working into how important is it to, um, to your practice to be able to share work on an international scale? Yeah, I think, um, I think as, um, I think I need to speak um, first of all for the for the artist, um, uh -huh. um, you know, as individual artists in the current um, circumstances and the isolation, the the channel has become more let's say blocked, 
um, in this originally intense environment. I mean, the, the, the contemporary field and the market is quite competitive, honestly. Uh, and as a, as a professional artist, it is necessary to, to maintain active um, creation and exposure on the exhibitions and the social platforms. I do believe this project gives artists an, an, an ideal platform to maintain connections with uh, like institutions, the public, the collectors and the potential collectors. So, and also another important aspect is due to a, a series of impacts brought by the pandemic, we will um, like somehow not be able to hold physical exhibitions in large scale no matter in London or in China, uh, because of all these uh, uncertainties. So we don't know how long it will last, but I have to say that this uh, this project has indeed um, redistributed uh, resources and um, uh, in this uh, to, a, to a certain extent. We have seen many online exhibitions and projects appear during the epidemic. I think this kind of action is a kind of um, decentralization, and it is also give us some time to rethink how the how the discourse is concentrated from a uh, from a curatorial perspective. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. and I think. Um... And just is it, I, and I guess also um, while we're all stuck at home, it's good to be able to communicate with as many people as possible, especially at this stage, which I guess we would have had all the parties and the mixers and the networking events and all these things that usually come with graduation time and everyone get everyone in the art world so excited to see what's happening and what you've all been making. And I guess this is, you can share it in this way, which is fantastic. Um, uh, and um, did you feel like it was any specific, specifically, did you feel like this was different to working on a um, physical show or did you find that there were more similarities? I think um, most of all, most of them, the, uh, the similarities, because all this process are based on our our previous experience in in curating and organizing the exhibitions and projects, uh, and like selecting works, setting the the schedules, um, conducting frequent communication with uh, the gallery and the artist. But for the curator, sometimes the communication process may take more time because the participants are no longer risk restricted by by the exhibition space or the artist has become more uh, international yeah but also we do need to consider the limitations of of online platforms for example this time we require that the exhibited works must be 2d or 2.5 dimensions so there are problems we truly faced but i believe that with this uh, increasing demand, I mean, all, all the projects, all the exhibitions are going to turn to online. So more adjustments will be made in the way to, to, to adapt the different works and medias. So um, like maybe virtual reality or the immersive narrative spaces so which allowed us to include more media in a better way yeah yes because i guess sculpture is the one that you think you, you would be most right. about yeah but i guess with VR, vr at least you get to kind of move around it see it in 3d and maybe experience the size in some way and scale depending on how you do it yeah it's interesting challenges but uh, moving on to yang are you Hi. There? Hi. Hi. Nice to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you too. How are you today? I'm good. I'm good. Just walking in the studio and uh, like it's really good too that we're having this Zoom call. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's lovely to meet you. 
And I wondered, um, how did you select the artists that you chose for this show? When so, I mean, um, I'm an artist, um, yeah. as a curator. Um, it's really hard to, um, to elect myself to like um, my own personal experience, my emotion. Um, to it's it's hard to remove those from when I selected the work, um, but I do uh, relate to the current times. Like uh, many of the other curators have mentioned, we live in a really strange times with um, with the pandemic hap uh, happening. Yeah. Um, and with um, and I do feel like I want to fight for uh, women's rights from the yeah. Me Too movement from two years ago. Um, with that as reference. Uh, as me as a woman grew up in uh, uh, in China in a more male um, higher male dominating society with listening to the male uh, um, older male from my family um, so I feel quite sympathetic towards um, like people like me um, and also with uh, the uh, with me um, studied in UK um, as a minority, I do feel sympathetic towards colored people, towards other minorities, as I'm in a um, um, gay relationship. So um, I do um, trying to support people with difficulties that um, with different, with trying to help them with um, access to exhibitions. So, for example, some, um, some people cannot be in UK. Um, so like they, they flew back due to the pandemic. Um, uh, America, South Korea, um, different parts of the um, different parts of the world. Yes. So uh, when I'm selecting people, I do take that into consideration. You're trying to platform people who you feel maybe aren't getting as much of an opportunity as others. Um, not ex like it's it's because it's an online opportunity, so it's okay. more open to uh, the selection. Oh, yes, of course. Yeah. Yeah. And I guess it gives you more freedom in your yes. practice. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wonderful. And then, um, and as and you say you're an artist, how's that been making your own work during this time? Um, I think that from the first lockdown, I've been, um, because, you know, like everyone got locked inside, um, there's no, so I spend a lot of time with my partner. Victoria, <laughs> um, and uh, so uh, I spend a lot of time thinking to reflect my past, to think about my journey. How do I become like I grew up up in a small town in China? How how do I end up here? Um, and uh, so I look back to the drawing sketches I did when I was little to think about uh, how I grow up. Basically, how do I become me today? Um, and I'm using I'm making new works, reflecting back on that. Oh, it sounds fascinating, and yeah, and, and what and what it sounds like you—that's been a pleasurable process for you as well. Yes, I do think so because my practice is quite flexible, so I adapt. Uh, I adopt any situation. Um, at home, I do performative work. I go out to do um, like videos um, in a park. Oh, and uh, the second pandemic, we luckily got a studio, um, so uh, which is quite. It's actually quite good for us because um, we we just basically come into the studio every single day. It's quite enjoyable. Yes, yeah. It's good to have a place to go. Yeah. Yeah. And um, well, thank you so much for speaking to me. I just quickly wanted to circle back to um, Greta and ask you, um, you, you spoke about um, uh, the freedom you were experiencing in terms of the institution and putting this show together and I wondered if you could elaborate a little bit more on that. Um, yeah of course I mean I think what I mean by that is that obviously um, the way audiences sort of circumvent the access accessibility of you know reaching artists we kind of tend to do the same thing in a way but what I really like about, you know, using digital platforms is that we are continuing to feed the market both culturally and also in terms of profit. Um, but there is a hierarchy that we're overstepping. So we're going straight 
to you know the artists themselves were not really imposed by what you know an institution represents or the representation of certain artists within the institution which is something that we all need to be thinking about constantly and also the, demo, the you know democratizing that sort of um, directive towards who do we pick and who do we not pick and why are we picking them so there's a lot of i think within the virtual realm there's a bit more fluidity but there's also more courage people mm -hmm. tend to overstep those sort of hierarchies because they can and um, whilst when you work within physical or institutional structures you need to respect a certain type of you know yes you know step by step kind of process yeah. which very often can be quite a challenging thing to do um, and once you manage to overstep it within those structures, it, tra structures, it is amazing. But um, I think working within the virtual, you are able to feel a bit more fluid in your approach and feel a bit more freed from those chains that we've kind of, you know, put on ourselves like socially and culturally. Yeah, absolutely. There are some liberating aspects to it, to this all. Absolutely. Yeah. And um, Janiao, I wanted to ask you as well, because it's just occurred to me, if you're there, no. Mm -hmm. Maybe I think he might have stepped away. Yeah, I can hear you. Oh, hi. I wanted to ask you. Um, sorry, I couldn't see you. I wanted to ask you about. Like, just occurred to me that you probably have opened up a lot more where you are than where we are. Like, we're still very much. Um, Museums are only a couple of days a week, everything's by appointment, it's all very kind of strict. So I thought, I mean, as we open up a bit, to, from an international perspective, it's all going to be very different in different places. Where are you at at the moment? Where you are? Um, uh, I'm in Shanghai. Oh yes, but are you open? Are the museums open? Is it a bit more? Because I think in England it's very much kind of restricted still. Okay, I think that we're having problems with the... So just to just to recap for you, Janelle, um, Amar Rose was asking if the museums are open and we'll just type in the questions for you, Janelle. Do you, should I, t would you like me to type them in? Uh, maybe, maybe Amar Rose, Feel free to ask others and I'll type in okay, for Janelle cool. and he'll come All next right, cool. All right, wonderful. And um and Victoria, I wanted to ask you as well, um, what's it been like? Um uh because Yang was just saying how nice it's been to kind of have your studio practice at this time. Um, how what's it been like to be able to kind of like to have a space to go to to make and to work on this project? It has been a, a a godsend to to put it to put it to put it bluntly. Um, during the first lockdown, uh, can you hear me? Okay, because I've got sorry, really bad I, sound I now. Sorry about this, uh, Janelle. Would you mind muting yourself? Is that any better? Yeah, it's a little better. Okay. Um. So, um, yes, during the first lockdown, um, I lost my studio space uh, because uh, my studio was in um, was in university. And of course, um, that all shut up and I had no rented studio to go to. And I found that very debilitating as an artist. It was very challenging for me to uh, transport my studio, my my practice to the home environment and try and work there uh, to, to the point that at the very beginning it was it was okay it was novel yeah. uh, and, yeah. and it's like okay new ways of working how can I explore this how can I expand this but as I progressed through the weeks with at that point in time, no known end in sight, uh, because because the government wasn't telling us that there would be any change. Yeah, I mean, you know, it was everything was topsy turvy, and um, 
and, and I found that I slowly, yeah, just kind of just stopped producing. Yeah. You know, it, it went from making watercolors and, and drawings to making less watercolors and drawings and then just making drawings and then making less drawings until nothing happened or or things didn't happen for days and days. Yeah. Or even, you know, well, suddenly suddenly it was actually. like kind of I, I did a drawing and then the next drawing I did was like 10 days later or yeah. two weeks later. Um, but but having but regaining a studio um, was transformative. Suddenly it was it was it was almost as if to an extent it was as if that break had never happened. Uh, well, you know, I kind of came into the studio yeah. and just hit the ground running. That's uh, suddenly, oh, okay, I am back in the office again. Yes. And uh, and functioning, and uh, it, it was, and um, it it was tremendously exciting. And I think that excitement propelled me forward with with the general practice of everything and and ideas. Show, and, yes. yeah, yeah. Whether whether it was whether it was um, cur curation or proposals or just generally just generally my my artistic practice oh wonderful wonderful and um it's just it's it's, it's, it's a very very fortunate position to be in yeah and a very privileged position to be in and it just shows how important artist space is especially um in london where space is so hard to come by most of the time i think i always feel like studio space is um essential for mm. practicing artists and curators. That's good, I'm glad to hear that you got in there. I just heard from Jin Yao that, um, yes, in Shanghai, everything's returned to normal. Yeah, um, yeah, hi, yeah. now I can hear you, sorry. Oh, I'm so glad. <laughs> so basically you're saying, yeah, what could we do, technology? But um, so, um, so everything's kind of much more back to normal in Shanghai. Yes, but uh, yeah, I just type the, the, the answers. The museums and the galleries have um, already returned to normal, back to normal, but they need to, we need to like keep the social distancing and make appointments and uh, wear masks. But um, recently there are some provinces, they have um, like some, uh, unexpected increased cases suddenly rise up. So there are lots of uncertainties. Mm -hmm. And due to the, the coronavirus and, or, and, and, the, and the shutdown and the lockdown, um, all these schedules for the institutions, the galleries has been disrupted. Oh, yeah. And yeah, yeah, like the global, I mean, the international, um, some biennials, some art fairs, they have to be shut down. And many exhibitions can't be carried out due to the, the border blocked. So, uh, but the good news is, uh, in the same time, many opportunities, opportunities uh, have been brought to the domestic artist, to the native artist. And uh, it is quite amazing for several art fairs uh, in China, the art, um, the art uh, 021 and the art Beijing, and also the, the, the art Basel online in Hong Kong. They have achieved a uh, unexpectedly uh, un good results and they sold very well. Oh, yeah. that's good. And then I guess it plays into this show now that you um, and the fact that even though things are opening up locally, um, we're still very going to be relying on these digital shows like the art and things like the Art Vault um, in order to, to get to see art, especially emerging art, perhaps. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's wonderful. Okay, um, is there, um, has anybody else got anything that they'd like to add before we wrap up? Okay. Well, Emma Rose, I just wanted to go back to what Victoria said about, you know, sort of being able to 
confront herself with the distance that she had mm -hmm. um, towards, you know, the studio space and then going back into it and that sort of um, instead of that sentiment fueling an alienation towards, you know, the entire period of time, it kind of, you know, makes all of us sort of more proactive towards wanting to change things for us in the future and adapting. And I think that's a sentiment that you can see throughout all of the artworks and it's, you know, it's sort of a light motif within, within all of the works that are presented. And I think that's a really beautiful, beautiful aspect of this period, of this really, really difficult period of time that we're all confronted with. Oh, wonderful. Absolutely. I kind of feel like a lot of the artwork I've been seeing, it really, yeah, it speaks to that very kind of raw emotional state. I think, yeah, that was awesome. like negatively, like maybe not negatively, but sadly associated with crisis, but also can be very cathartic to see. Absolutely. Yeah, wonderful. And um, I think we're, is there any questions? I think people are going to send questions into the um, chat box. Yeah, you know, mm -hmm. pop right. any yeah. questions that you have on the, on the below box would be amazing. Yes. yes. So just typed in as well. Yeah. There's a chat box in the Q and A section. So please go ahead and type your questions there. Um, so while uh, you think about a few questions, uh, I, uh, also have a, a few thoughts to share. Um, in, in fact, uh, thank you so much. This was extremely illuminating and exciting and interesting uh, in, in terms of your insights. And uh, we, you'd, I'd love to, of course, hear more. There's so much to talk. And therefore we will have a series of talks as well. This is of course the uh, launch uh, conversation that we wanted to invite all the emerging curators and then uh, while we focus on each university, we will have a few uh, conversations online with the artists, with the curators, um, and with other guests as well. Um, so uh, watch this space. Um, now we have another question from Nicole. How do you see uh, the market evolving in the near future of emerging artists? Will the exposure in social media, digital platforms help to step up the international art market? easier to be picked. Absolutely, Mikol, I'll start. And of course, uh, feel free to answer this question as well, uh, panel. Um, so up by important, yeah, picked up by important galleries and exhibit in the institutional place. So absolutely, um, the whole uh, the whole idea uh, that, uh, uh, that we are building on as a foundation is that one, there is absolutely, um, again, compelling talent uh, right here, uh, uh, with the, you know, with graduates, recent graduates, right from you know curation to um, uh, you know artists as well, and the idea is that uh, discovery, the point of discovery, uh, is the biggest kind of hurdle, uh, an obstacle, and uh, the bottleneck in the whole process of uh, um, looking at and browsing and, and discovering interesting uh, points of view and perspectives. So that's exactly what we wish to democratize uh, with uh, breaking down barriers of what a traditional gallery would have, for example. Um, and therefore the idea of on, an online format um, with uh, you know, calling in guest curators would help us break those barriers down. And also, of course, when things open up, we'd love to have pop-up shows. So we're not going to be an online only gallery, uh, but so far, of course, it makes more sense um, that we are able to showcase these works internationally to an international audience. So one, absolutely discovery and visibility, uh, but two, the idea is um, of course sales. That is an important part um, of an artist's career to develop a portfolio of collectors as well, because collectors also could get into uh, get you into institutions. So on this call, I do know that we have some very important collectors um, who are heads of uh, various museums, international museums, right from Whitney to so on. Um, and also, uh, of course, we do have um, uh, you know some other institutions, inclu including um, some auction houses. So the idea is to one um, create this uh, digital exchange uh, so that people can participate um, and create that kind of uh, environment and conversation. But also, uh, that's for the art collector, the curator, uh, and the institutions. On the other side, for the artists to create that kind of platform and freedom to um, showcase 
uh, via the emerging curators as well uh, to showcase a perspective which is uh, hopefully uh, picked up by again international curators and institutions and collectors hopefully that answers uh, some part of the question i'd love for anyone else to go ahead and um, pick up uh, that perspective as well um, right. perhaps yeah. go ahead mazi i'd love to pick up on that social social media part of the question sorry um for from Nicole. i think it's a really i think it's a really prevalent question at the moment this, this idea of you know, social media giving a lot of exposure to artists. But I think something that's really important to kind of mention is that that kind of success on social media can also be an illusion. And we have to really kind of, you know, we have to also bear in mind that we need to monetize that. And that you know, for artists, gaining cultural capital doesn't pay their rent and it doesn't pay their studios. And so we need online platforms that help give that kind of baseline and that support. Uh, to people who are building those kind of you know online social media portfolios mm -hmm. yes please can we go ahead yes i agree mazi what you're saying it's true the artists through social media have their voice stepping out they immediately have access to a huge amount of audience but that's not necessary you know to be to start making sales or to be part of an art gallery or to go to an art fair you need a lot more help and this is why you're here this is how curators can help the artist communicate their voice and also why COVID is here, we're kind of building this community to to help them to step in the art market. So yes, and actually Nicole is Bettina, she's using the Sarah, she's using her daughter's Go um ahead. and thank you Bettina for the question because it's really relevant up to now. Mm -hmm. And it's true, it's you know, but we have to be careful because the artists always need help, need support, in in need to be mentored in 360 degrees and that's why these curators are here and it's you know it's a big community is helping each other yes absolutely so victoria i'll come to you shortly just in response to kami's uh, uh comments and absolutely kami you're right at the same time um now is more than ever is uh is the time for the artists to have to showcase their own voice without you know, and intimidatory as well. So it's wonderful to have um, uh, the curators uh, come in and um, get a kind of perspective and showcase a vision, which is excellent. At the same time, uh, th again, through digital media, uh, you're absolutely right, Mazi and Greta, uh, whereas there is obviously, you know, you have the followers and so on and access, but doesn't always lead to the uh, right, you know, results or a, a, a pathway or a segue to a career that an artist wishes to develop. So all of these, you know, roles are important. Um, so like you said, Kami, we are here for that reason, same, you know, with the curators. Um, and the idea is that um, we uh, wish to um, have many of these conversations, not only uh, creating a potential for investment in the artist, because the idea is that the collectors, institutions, so on, are discovering their next investment as well. So there is that uh, potential uh, of discovery, which is also quite exciting um, for the market. So hopefully that covers the angle for the market itself and how the contemporary art market, which is thriving now uh, more, more, more so than ever, um, can uh, look at ideas like these, platforms like these. Uh, and that's how we wish to differentiate uh, from other galleries. Uh, so Victoria, please go ahead. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, so <clears throat> uh, I thought um, I agree with everything that's been said and think the response to the question so far has been very, very interesting. Uh, but to when I think about the question, the question's words, when I first read it, I was remembering um, uh, like uh, podcasts and and um, online uh, panel discussions similar to what we're having that was happening <clears throat> earlier in the year in in May in June in July um, when when the pandemic was when when lockdown was in full flow and we were when everyone was in a lot of panic. Uh, art fairs were being cancelled and um, I, I remember listening to 
online discussions where panelists were talking about the fact that the the art world is more and more likely going to be more digital um it and and um and what the what the um public response to the pandemic has done to the art world is just um accelerate the evolution of um of the the traditional way in which it was operating to a more online um pathway uh but that said uh, it, it, let's not also forget that art has to needs calls out for being um experienced physically uh, and a screen does not um fully like interpret what what the audience what an what an audience can experience uh with, with, like in 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 real presence in front of the work um and and some of the and also some of the old rules in terms of ideas of um how does this matter for emerging artists or for any artist for that matter you know it's it's like you know social media is a great way to connect with people and um and i, I mean i i'm a great user of it i love it uh i um and and there are other digital ways i was listening to another podcast um on, only um a few days ago which was talking about the use of um augmented reality and the way in which that can um further expose um art practices to a broader audience and it's an incredible thing but but you know the 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 important things of what of how uh an artist or an emerging artist um comes out into the into the public sphere from from um from their studio from the, from the art school is that you know it it's it's got to be work that that people connect with in and, and and collectors who 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 will buy work for a myriad of different reasons um from from liking it for whatever reason is personal to them to to in some cases also thinking of investment um also want a story you know a story of the uh, you know the story of the artist um is something that can really elevate a work and we've seen it time and time again with other historical artists that you know the the reason that we like a key piece uh from 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 the artist is as much about the story behind it and the story of the artist as it is about the work itself and what it may communicate no i absolutely agree with you victoria there and uh, therefore we'd love to communicate uh the story of the artist one is via text which is you know on our website which is a description of the artwork itself uh coming from the artist other than the artist statement and also via conversations which will we will be having very soon uh with the artists so uh, curators in conversation with the artists uh where collectors can get to know the artists a bit more uh right now of course virtually and you're right victoria in terms of um, experiencing um the work of art in person the physicality of it um and that's incredibly important so of course when everything opens up and it becomes um more uh i think more settled and stable uh the idea was always to in have pop up shows for few days and take them online so in fact even before the pandemic this was always our uh, model um and then the pandemic happened and we obviously launched in june so for us it was an extremely easy shift so we shifted quickly to a vr gallery so which you can go ahead and check um and ar which is augmented reality is coming soon 
uh, to our website next year. So watch the space as well. Um, and it's an incredibly interesting way to experience artwork. And since, because you cannot see the artwork right now, except on the website, therefore we do offer collectors, you know, a return as well if they're not satisfied, but till now, of course, no returns. But the idea is that this is the next best thing. It is probably not going to replace a physical show, but the idea is to get, you know, access and again, uh, being able to connect with the artist uh, in ways that we can uh, right now. I do have a question. Uh, what are some of the exciting positive shifts and changes, big or small, in and around the art industry that you have started to see uh, to emerge during the current situation? I'll start with Amaros. I'd love to know your view, Amaros. I'm quite curious. And then um, we'll see um, around the panel as well. And this will be our last question uh, before um, we wrap up. Okay, um, positive shifts, I think. Um, I feel like definitely in terms of climate and the impact of the art world on the body and um, the planet, I think us all staying at home a bit has been positive and it's made a lot of people really look at the pace of my job or someone who works like me and I'm sure like yourself as well traveling all the time and having actually being able to stay at home for a bit really I think that um it again um brought a lot of conversations that I've been hearing to the fore and I think that's a really positive thing because you know it makes us and the planet healthier in terms of the um in terms of the market I think I'm not sure. I, I kind of feel like cautious to make big judgments about that right now. But one thing I did think was really lovely to see was things like the artist support pledge and initiatives like that, which saw um, artists, you know, if you search the hashtag, then you can find artworks for about 200 pounds and under. And if as an artist, um, once you've sold eight artworks for that price, then you buy an artwork from another partaking artist. And I think things like that, like infrastructural, like things linked to resilience and um, supporting each other, that was something really, really positive. I'm loath to make any big market judgments off the top of my head, <laughs> but that I thought was lovely to see. Wonderful. No, thank you, Emma Rose. That uh, makes sense and it's a, a succinct. Uh, view of what's happening out there. Uh, anybody else who would like to take the question? Yeah, I, uh, I tend to agree um, with Emma Rose. I mean, um, obviously, sort of value, you know, giving value to more local communities and sort of being restricted in a way is it has opened up a lot of discourses that in that before were much more on a global scale. And I think looking inwards helps us to look into a bit more, you know, um, uh, shorter distance kind of communities and and realities that we've got around us, which we should actually value much, you know, much more than we have in in the past 20 years. So, um, but also that notion of, um, as Emma Rose mentioned, that sort of collaborative notion of wanting to help each other, going, you know, getting through times of these sorts. Um, I feel like a lot of institutions have always functioned upon this sort of competitiveness and an artist as well, because the market sort of asked them to do so. It was structured in a way in which it was about, you know, who's making more profit. And I think right now it's, it's it hasn't changed as drastically. And I don't want to make huge statements either, but I feel like there are a lot of initiatives which are coming out, which are trying to sort of reshape that, that structure a little bit. And um, yeah, so I think there's a, there's a hopefulness in that. that um, even even a, a moment like this has really shaped shaped the way we behave and interact with each other, even on a large scale. May, may I may I say something in regards to that in response to to what Greta was just saying? Um, in as much as that, um, yeah, there are wonderful initiatives, but um, I don't. For me, in my experience and observation of what's been happening over the past. Um, well, I mean, where do we stand now? Um, six months, seven, eight months since, since, um, since kind of things went absolutely haywire in March. Um, um, 
you know, for my observation of the gallery's behavior is that it's not just about, um, about competition or between artists or, um, or about money making. I mean, look, look at, look at the, um, at the um, London Grads Now um, event at Saatchi. Oh, you know that, I mean, in, initially um, the, the college has closed down for all of us and um, all of us here like um, participating in this panel and, and, for, and, and for the artists that we have that we have um, curated into this into this particular show on carpet, um, but in terms of going back to um, April, you know, I, I approached um, Kristen Yellegard Gallery um, in regards to doing a show for um, for the graduates. And I mean, she didn't. They, the gallery didn't have to agree to it, but they did. They made they made their space available free of charge. They didn't take commission. They wanted to allow artists to to be seen, artwork to be seen, and Saatchi followed on from that. Saatchi got in touch because of what of what um, um, RCA and uh, and and. Mandy at RCA and myself at Slade were doing with with um, KH Gallery, and and said let's do something bigger together too, um, and, and and you know it, it it was an incredible event which allowed a wonderful exposure for artists and um, and and for their artwork you know and for the public to. Um, to engage because ultimately isn't isn't that dare I say what art is all about anyway um it's why um uh, digital futures at Covet is happening because it's all about art engagement Absolutely, Victoria. I think we've said the same thing. I mean, uh, Mazzy and I also, you know, contributed as curators to the Saatchi show. And um, we've done that with the same intentions as you have. And I think that's a, that was a huge step forwards in, in even just the construction of the way we've, we showcase graduate works and graduate artists. I mean, it really opened up a huge spectrum, which wasn't there before. And the question is, why wasn't it there before? So, um, yeah. yeah. Why, yeah. why, why wasn't it happening before? But why is it happening now? Exactly. And I think that's a huge sign that that's a huge step forward. And that's exactly what, what I was aiming to say as well. So you've underlined that perfectly. And thank you for, you know, for using that example, because it was really a huge, you know, milestone for all of us. Yes, no, absolutely. And uh, thank you so much, Victoria and Greta, for uh, talking about that, how there have been institutional shifts. Um, hopefully positive and here to stay. Um, and uh, Yang, uh, would you have any final thoughts there? And I'll go to Mazi and Jinya for a final thought and I'll share my thoughts and uh, Kami and then we'll wrap up. So Yang? No, I think uh, what Victor said was really good about like uh, how we having this opportunity right now. And I do think it's a bigger, stronger opportunity because like what I said earlier, it's open up to the people that's not physically in UK, which is really important right now because from the pandemic and the people, and also like, let's say from the internet, um, and we know that um, people started using internet more and more often and from the pandemic and it started like rising, going up like, like crazy. And uh, we're having this opportunity which open up, like connect the world together. We have artists from Korean, China, um, America, um, like somewhere Europe, you know, it's, it's, it's just like, great wonderful opportunity and thank you for uh Sarah for you um just like uh you are so um you're a wonderful woman and a great female leader um and uh, we do need more female leaders in the world um it's we need um I mean female voice need to be heard 
No, absolutely, Yang, and thank you for your kind words, but uh, absolutely, I think uh, I also come from Asia, so I, I know what exactly you're talking about. I've also been a part of the kind of very patriarchal culture, um, so I know exactly what you're talking about, and I'm very passionate about um, equality and rights and diversity, which is diversity of opinion, which is ultimately going to shape the world because uh, a monolithic perspective never helps anyone. And we know where the power lies and the power shift is go is happening right now, not that it's going, it's happening right now. And that's where we wish to um, come in and uh, forge these pathways because the idea when we launched in June was always to showcase emerging artists. So that was always at the core of our ethos. And it just so happened that via conversations um, we, you know, very quickly in a few months, we got to this point that uh, we're able to uh, partner with, uh, you know, really exciting, incredible rising um, curators like, like yourselves. So we are thrilled to be able to partner and collaborate with you um, and so much more to come as well. And just for others, um, you know, we are part of uh, uh, this uh, selection of uh, startups who are recognized by Creative Industries Council and under the guidance of Mayor of London um, for business growth programs. So uh, all in a few months, literally right after we launched. So there is so much scope uh, that the government is also recognizing uh, that the creative industries are exceedingly important, especially during these times. And uh, how do we, uh, through, you know, through business ideas, through uh, collaborations, how can we revive the economy, uh, which creative industries take an incredible part in. Um, so one is the economy, but also the soul, uh, as Victoria and others mentioned as well, connect, connecting to another human being through the work that they make. Uh, through the artwork, through their perspectives, the dialogue and narrative. So I think that's also incredibly important, which I'm super passionate about. Um, and Mazi, any final thoughts there? Yeah, I mean, I guess my, my final thought would be to kind of echo Greta and Victoria and say that I think that, you know, the collectivism and collaboration this year has been really interesting and it's kind of given us a chance to kind of take stock and consider that um, we've actually just published this kind of online interactive map of spaces that are contributing uh, to, the, to the London emerging art scene uh, called Credit X. And we've just, because we've been working, you know, across these spaces, we've really noticed all these kind of initiatives that have come out that are really quite like, you know, they're really quite almost selfless. They're quite amazing um, initiatives. And I think that, you know, we see that with, with platforms like Cover as well. And, and I think, you know, I'd like to leave it with a kind of thought, final thought of just saying um, on behalf of me and the other curators, to a big thank you to you, Saras, and your team for all your kind of support on this and insight. Oh, thank you. Amazing. Well, thank you so much, everyone. Um, and Cami, any final words? No, thank you. And um, I'm very lucky and I'm, I'm sure I'm talking also on behalf of Sarah to have met you all. Um, hopefully when this pandemic will end to see you in person because I've only seen you through Zoom, but it's a pleasure because each one of you gave me, transmitted me your experience, which for me is the, the most important thing, your experience, your creativity. And this is actually why we're here because COVID wants to join all these creativeness and, and all these different experience, different cultures, as we were saying, it's so, so important. And even here, this panel is, we're all coming from different parts of the world, which is fantastic. So amazing. So thank you. And also thank you to all the friends that I can see that have joined. Amazing. Well, thank you so much. This was such an incredible panel, uh, moderated exquisitely by Emma Rose. Uh, so thank you again, Emma Rose, for joining us. Um, and thank you to each of the curators. Uh, you're such wonderful souls and I see such great leadership. Um, I can't uh, wait to see what the other shows are going to look like. I'm so excited to launch the Art Vault with you all. Um, and uh, there are so many exciting uh, opportunities and talks and dialogues to come out of this. So thank you so much, um, Greta, Mazi, Junio, Victoria and Yang. Um, and cover team. So thanks everyone. I've heard some 
quite a few uh, thanks and great talk and all of that. So thank you everyone for uh, such lovely words and uh, all that really helps us. So thanks a lot, take care, um, have a lovely uh, evening. Bye-bye. <laughs>